In this video, we're going to rank every single member of the Brotherhood of Mutants under Magneto's Six Threat Leadership. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Big Gaming. I hope everyone has been doing fantastically well. I've seen a few people uh, ask in previous videos when we are bringing back uh, the affiliation breakdowns and the ranking of the affiliations. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is going to be uh, a return to those. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Brotherhood of Mutants. They've obviously had a new member uh, that isn't on the official documents, I don't think yet, but it was on the timeline documents. So the assumption there is that Shadow King will also be part of the Brotherhood of Mutants in the normal timeline. How are we going to do these? How are we going to break them down? Well, we're going to use the normal S through to D ranking. Um, S being absolutely exceptional, do not leave home without them. A being pretty good, but um, they might not make it into uh, every single squad that you play, but most definitely make it into every single roster. B is going to be perfectly serviceable, middle of the road. C is going to be fine, but there may be another character in affiliation uh, that is a better choice. And then lastly is going to be D tier, which is really do not touch right now. They're probably not the best in the game. But before we jump into that, um, let's start by taking a look at Magneto, aka Max Eisenhart in this version of the game. So he is a six threat leader, so he is quite expensive. Um, he's got a, a couple of, well, one really, really good builder with ver reverse polarity. The way that works, it's range three and it's a six cost or a, a six strength, sorry. Power equal to damage dealt. Uh, but if the target character is within two, Magneto gets to reroll all of his dice or any of his dice, sorry, should I say. Um, and if it's outside of two, he gets to push the target character short. So it can be used in a couple of different ways. You know, typically it's you pull them in towards you uh, or push them in towards you. Sorry, terminology there. Um, and then you would follow it up with another reverse polarity, or you can use this to attack two separate characters um, to use it as a control mechanism. His shrapnel blast is okay. I don't often find myself using it too much, um, but let's take a look at his um, leadership from the ruins, affiliation brotherhood of mutants. When a terrain feature is destroyed, after the effect is resolved, choose a number of allied characters equal to or less than the terrain feature's size. Each chosen character gains one power. A character may only gain one power as a result of this leadership ability per turn. So a lot like the power generation things, it is limited to once per turn, but it is worth noting a couple of things. Obviously, um, if you're quite wide, if you're four or five characters wide, for example, and you throw a size three into a size two building, uh, that's going to be five in total. So you'd be able to dish out five power if you had five characters. Uh, so that can be really nice to turn some things on early doors. But also, um, it works in your opponent's turn as well. Um, so it's it's really, really nice. Um, it's some pretty consistent power generation. And when you take a look what Magneto does with his Fatal Attraction, so spend one to four, uh, throw a terrain feature of that size. So if it's a one, it's a one. Four, it's a four. And you can do it as many times as you want in a turn, but... Each time using it, you have to pay one for each time it's been used previously. So on the first time you use it, there's no tax. The second time, it's going to cost you one. Uh, and then if it's a size three that you're throwing, it will be three for that. So it'll be four power in total. But then if you were to do it again, that same size three building is going to cost five power in total. So it gets more expensive as you, as you go up. Uh, but obviously, throughout all of that, he's able to generate power uh, that he can give to himself as well, but also to his teammates, remembering that it is a maximum of one power per turn. Um, he's also got a... He, he brings two tactics cards. One of them um, 
isn't very good, uh, but the one that you really want to look at is Magnetic Refraction. This is a recyclable card. Recyclable cards have so much value. Um, it's going to cost you two power, but everyone, including Magneto uh, within range three, is going to get cover one. And that cover one works a little bit like Rocket's cover, where they always have it. And the only way it can be turned off if, is if you've got a character attacking you um, who stops you from modifying uh, your defense dice. That's the only way that can be turned off. So being within range two doesn't stop it. Um, so he's looking for characters that sort of play into that, into the power generation side of things. He is six threat, so you know he's typically going to be in taller squads not always but typically into taller squads so first up then we have got the new and improved colossus piotr rasputin um he brings some really nice things that uh, brotherhood are um lacking otherwise um First of all, plain catch is obviously very, very nice. It leans into that Magneto leadership. Uh, but really, it's the combination of Big Brother with Bosmoy and Organic Steel that, especially on those narrow maps, make him very, very good indeed. So Big Brother is going to be his bodyguard uh, ability. Uh, Bosmoy allows him to add two dice to his defense rolls and then organic steel is going to reduce the damage he takes by one to a minimum of one but organic steel also lets him um, or stops him from being pushed by enemy effects so anything that would push him he just does not move um <clears throat> which is really nice especially as i say on those narrow maps you're down the middle of gamma wave something like that um he works really, really well. Um, I think he is, in his new form, especially with that medium medium move, he's an absolutely solid choice. Um, he's going to want to be spending a lot of power, so being able to generate and put power into him, because his strike is okay. Um, you know, it's power equal to damage dealt. Um, on, a, on, a, on a range 2-5, um, but... It's really there as the bodyguard, stopping your other characters from taking that damage. And if you add in that cover that we spoke about from Magneto, he can be extremely difficult to take down, especially with that 4-3-3 start line. I think he's absolutely solid. Um, I don't know if he's the absolute best of the four threats, but for me, he's going straight up into that A tier. Um, I, I don't think he makes it into every single squad that you build, uh, but I think he can easily sit in your roster as a character that you can call upon um, as and when he is needed. Okay, then next up is going to be Emma Frost, uh, another four threat. Um, she brings some cheaper mystic attacks than what uh, Scarlet Witch does. She's obviously got her diamond form where she sort of switches over everything and is very very tanky um she does have the ability to uh stop your opponent using uh interact sorry using reactive superpowers or reactive team cards so that can be really really nice um she has some control elements to what she brings um i do think her um her diamond form is a little bit lackluster. Yes, she does get a throw on there as well, um, but I, I, I just, I always find myself playing her more as a, as a character sitting back, maybe behind somebody like Colossus, um, who can then, you know, dish out attacks and move people and, you know, add some control in there. Um, I'm going to be brutally honest, guys. Whilst I think she's a good character. I do think that there are better options for her or than her in in the Brotherhood of Mutants, both in a four threat capacity, uh, but also in terms of mystic attacks. Um, I still think she's perfectly serviceable, though. So for me, she's going to go into that B tier. Next up, then, is the Cajun himself, Gambit, a.k.a. Remy LeBou. Um Look, he can he can dish out a reasonable amount of damage, as we saw, um, if the scenario is perfectly set up for him in the damage video that we did recently. Um, and yes, the extra power generation is going to help him to be able to do a 52 car pickup earlier, or maybe um, a little something extra a few more times. Um, but for me, he's just a little bit lackluster. There are definitely 
definitely better three threat options. Um, so it's not that he's a bad character. Um, I just personally don't like him in Brotherhood of Mutants. Um, so for me, unfortunately, Remy is going to go into that C tier. Okay, then. So next up is going to be Kane Marco, a.k.a. The Juggernaut, um, or Juggernaut as he's called in, uh, in 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 this game. There is no the at the beginning of it. Um, I mean, look, we all know what Juggernaut does, and I think if this was a, um, I think if this was under Mystique's leadership, I would be ranking him higher. Um, I think he would be pushing up to that uh, S tier potentially, but he's still a very, very good character. That combination of using either Emma Frost or using Mystique, um, for him to use something like um, Do You Know How Who I Am, uh, where he gets, you know, it's his tactics card where he gets to throw a uh, size 4 building, meaning that it turns off any defensive tech and it turns off um, any reactive tactics card. So, Things like Brace for Impact or even Exceptional Healing are not going to work. And he is very, very difficult to take down. A little bit like Colossus. Um, once he's in there and he's in the mix and he's benefiting from Magneto's um, magnetic refraction, he is extremely difficult to take down. Obviously, on his, uh, on his injured side, he does become a little bit easier to take down, especially with those Mystic attacks. But... He does then gain the avatar of Sitarak, which again leans into um, that sort of play style. I think he's absolutely solid. I would not expect many people to be building a Brotherhood of Mutants roster without Juggernaut being in there. That's something I would definitely question. So for me, he's going to go up to that A tier, and I'm going to put him just above Colossus. I still think he does a little bit more than Colossus. Yes, he, he costs a threat more. Um, but he's still really, really good. And as I say, if he was under Mystique's leadership, I think I'd probably put him that little bit higher. But he is a five threat. So taking him and Magneto means that you're already at 11 threat, uh, which is obviously quite an expensive core uh, that you've got together there. Okay, then, guys, next up is going to be the other leader of the Brotherhood of Mutants, Raven Darkholm, a.k.a. Mystique. Um, she brings some really nice things. Um, her pistol is not to be sniffed at uh, with that with that rapid fire. She also brings an absolutely amazing tactics card in Deception, which means you can you know bring somebody towards you, and especially if you've been able to use Magneto to maybe display some of your other or some of your opponents or the characters and open it up so they're outside of range two um, of your sort of target character. Um, yes, it is restricted now, but it's still. A very, very good card. Martial artist means that she's that little bit more survivable um, than what you would uh, than what you would expect. And she has stealth, so it does mean opponents need to get that little bit closer into her. Um, espionage, I think, is a bit of an underrated spender. The fact that it dishes out stun before damage is dealt. Um, means that your opponent is only ever going to get one power from the damage that's done from that. So that can be really, really nice. And in a pinch, yes, it does cost an action, but expert sabotage to blow up a building um, and all enemy characters, and it is only enemy characters within range one, are all going to take two damage. And it's a size three uh, for three power. So it's going to, you're going to essentially get that power back. Yes, you've got to distribute it among your uh, fellow squad members, but it's still really, really good. Um, Mystique is very, very good, even under Magneto's leadership. So she is going in there at that A tier. And I am going to put her just below Colossus. Um, she's very, very solid, but um, I think she goes just below Colossus. There's an argument to say she could be slightly higher up, um, but uh, yeah, for me, she goes just underneath there. She would have been higher. She probably would have been the top end of A if Deception wasn't a restricted card. So the opportunity cost for that now has just gone up that little bit, uh, meaning that it's, you know, you are you are then only allowed to take one other restricted tactics card. Um, but I think even with that, she's very, very good and definitely deserves a place in any Brotherhood roster, whether you're using her leadership or not. Okay, then, guys, next up is going to be another three threat, St. John Allardyce, a.k.a. Pyro, a very, 
very good three threat character. And again, a three threat character, I think, really shines under Mystique's leadership. Um, I think he shines less so under Magneto. And, and let me explain my reasoning behind that. Um, his big thing is obviously he gets to dish out incinerate to pretty much anyone that he attacks, especially with um, with his fire manipulation. Uh, if when he targets an enemy and they have incinerate after the attack is resolved, um, they, he then gets to pass it on to somebody else. And incinerate's really, really good. Um, obviously, in the Magneto list, we're going to be doing attack, so that incinerate will work, but it doesn't work when you are throwing terrain or throwing characters around. Um, so I think it has less value. He's still got the ability to be able to do some good damage. He brings some energy attacks, which in Brotherhood of Mutants is actually um, one of the attacks that is a little bit lacking. We've got a lot of physical We've got a lot of um, we've got a lot of mystic attacks, big mystic attackers, but we don't have a huge amount of energy attacks, which is you know I suppose not too surprising. Um, so he's still really really good. Um, again, he would be higher under a mystique leadership. He also does bring a nice tactics card in pyrotechnics. Um, so for me, he's going to go in B tier, just above Emma. So still absolutely perfectly fine you know, a character I would expect to see in a Brotherhood roster. Um, but I think for me, if I, you know, and again, it's always conditional. Uh, if I have the choice between Mystique or Pyro, I'm probably leaning towards Mystique more, especially if I'm taking Juggernaut as well. Um, but again, in the right setup, especially with that flame jet. So if you're on something like a gamma wave and you've got a Colossus there to be able to protect him, um, that can be absolutely devastating. So still a very, very solid character with a really nice tactics card. Uh, but for me, in that B tier, perfectly serviceable, nothing wrong with him whatsoever. Next up then, guys, is going to be the first child of Magneto. And one of the two twins is, of course, Quicksilver, a.k.a. Pietro Maximoff, even though they've got a different last name. Who knows? Um, he brings some nice things with him. Uh, his supersonic strike, if you do manage to get one of the triggers off, can be really, really good. Um, his cyclonic vortex is really, really good. You know, Quicksilver is all here about the extract play, right? Um, he's not really adding anything into Magneto's leadership and contributing to that power generation, but the power that he gains from it can be used to great effect. Um, his speedster is very, very nice, and I can actually see him being a very, very good character in the timeline modes, um, especially because all of the shenanigans of being able to get to a middle extract and then get back have disappeared. If he's got enough power on him, Quicksilver has the ability to be able to do that because of that speedster um, and the fact it only costs two power for a long move is very, very nice indeed. I think he's an absolutely solid three threat. He does also bring a tactics card that allows you to steal uh, a extract from your opponent as well, which can be absolutely clutch and because of those supersonic reflexes and can't catch me um he is a little bit tricksy you know he he does last a little bit longer than what you would uh, assume from that 333 stat line and his five stamina um i think he's perfectly serviceable um there's a card that he brings or there's a card that he's part of that needs him scarlet witch and magneto where you get an extra activation on Magneto. I used to play it all the time. I don't play it anymore, um, just purely because I actually don't think it's that good. Uh, but even so, with all of that, for me, he's going into a solid B tier, probably just underneath Pyro, because Pyro does bring all of those energy attacks that we are lacking a little bit. Next up then is the wife of the Cajun, but that is doing her a disservice. It is Rogue, a.k.a. Anne-Marie LeBou. Uh, another four threat, so we do have a lot of four threat characters in here. And she brings something a little bit different. Um, first of all, she's got a charge, which is very, very easy to turn on round one because of the, you know, we're able to siphon that extra power into her. Um, marvelous Strength, so si uh, three cost for a size four. Uh, building or terrain feature even which is really really good and obviously being able to spend three to generate four power 
is very, very nice uh, for your team. Um, she saps power as well from her opponent. Southern Hospitality as an attack is not to be sniffed at. And to be fair, Mutant Absorption can come in absolute clutch just to be able to either strip power away from uh, a particular character or indeed uh, just get damage onto them as well. Um, I think she's really, really solid. Um, I didn't like her at first in Brotherhood of Mutants. She didn't really fit into my playstyle, but I have come round to it. I think she's absolutely solid, like I say. She's going to go into that B tier right in between um, Pyro and Quicksilver. Um, so would not be surprised to see her on the table. And if you haven't, you should definitely try her out. Next up then, guys, is one of my favourite characters in the Brotherhood of Mutants. Uh, it is Sabretooth Victor Creed, the OG version. Um, I don't know what it is about this character for me, but he just does absolute work. No matter where I take him, um, he's featured in quite heavily in a number of rosters that I've put together. When I played Brotherhood way, way back in the day, he always featured in there in my roster. Um, that aggressive is really, really nice. Untamed Force, being able to clap your opponent back, is also very, very nice indeed. And that Savage Predator, if you get the finisher off, and then you get to make that five dice claw slash attack, um, where you get to reroll any number of your dice, his damage, his single target damage output is exceptional. Um, we did a video a couple of years back now, um, and he finished second just behind Corvus Glaive. So he can absolutely deal out the damage he can also benefit from cards such as um, exceptional healing just to keep him alive that little bit longer and he is another long move character which again is not to be sniffed at um, it can be very very useful um, especially in combination uh, with asteroid m where you can teleport one character to another uh, he's a great great candidate for that um the, the ranking on this guy may surprise a few people, especially when we get to the next one. Uh, but for me, I absolutely love him. He always does work for me. This may be a little bit higher than what people expect, but for me, he's going up into that A tier, right down at the very bottom of it. You know, for me, he's a B plus, A minus character, um, but I just absolutely love him. He always does work, far more so than his uh, alter ego, shall we say, Sabretooth apex predator so another four threat and look let's be honest guys when you look at apex predators card versus saber tooth og's card he is just a better character right but i don't know why for whatever reason i've just never really gelled with this version of saber tooth um he doesn't seem to do as much for me he's much more power hungry than what this version of saber tooth is um i think Almost Apex Predator works better with Mystique, and then the OG version works better with Magneto. Um, but I think he's still he's still really, really good. But for me, unfortunately, and again, this may surprise people, he falls into the C category. And I'm going to put him to the top. And let me explain my reasoning why behind this. Um, I think there are better four threat characters than him to choose from. And if I'm taking this version of Sabretooth, I can't take the OG version of Sabretooth. Yes, I know it may surprise people, but that's just the way it is for me. Um, this guy never performs. He never does what I need him to do. Whereas the OG version just always gets the job done. So, yep, they may be the other, round to, other way around to what people were expecting. But for me, he's C tier and the, uh, the OG version is A tier. Okay then guys, up next is the other daughter of um, of Max Eisenhart, whatever his name is, uh, Magneto, uh, and obviously twin to Quicksilver, it's Scarlet Witch, aka Wanda Maximoff, the big powerhouse, five threat, mystic damage dealer, she's got a throw on there, she can dish out judgment, which is a very, very underrated condition, um, really really underrated she also has chosen of Cthon, meaning that she's including failure results um 
to its total successes, and that is attacking, defending, or dodging as well. So even though she's only a 3-4-4, even when she's dodging incoming things, her defensive stat line is really, really good. Uh, Hexfield is, is kind of okay. It stops characters from shaking Hex, Judgment, and Poison. Realistically, people are not often shaking those conditions. They're usually getting rid of them in other ways. Um, but Hexball range for six uh, six strength mystic attack with that chaos magic um, so for each failure in the roll you can get you can dish out bleed hex incinerate or poison it is one of those cumulative things if you roll three failures you get to dish out three of those conditions which is absolutely brutal hex um, is such a good um a, 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 such a good special condition to be able to dish out she's then also got two tactics cards um, she's got no more mutants which is going to turn off I think it's three power and it's going to turn off um, any any superpower that somebody's going to do they spend for it and if she's within range five she can spend the money and it's as if they had used it so if it's something like a ferocity on Malekith or any other character where you know it's a one-time use They've used it. They don't even get the power back, which is absolutely brutal. But her better tactics cards is no... Um, the Whims of Chaos. It is unbelievable. You spend X amount of power. You get to do X amount of healing. You get to dish out X amount of um, conditions. It can affect almost the entire board um, in the right setup. It's very, very good. And again, this may surprise people, guys, but I still think she is the best five threat character in the Brotherhood of Mutants. So for me, she's going all the way up to S tier. Yes, she is a little bit of a glass cannon, but with characters like Colossus and the cover that we can get from Magneto, there are ways and means of being able to protect her that little bit better now in Brotherhood. And I think she is an absolute stalwart. Her damage output is immense. Um, and the fact that she counts um, all of those failures in everything she rolls is really, really good indeed. Next up then, guys, is going to be the newest member um, of the Brotherhood of Mutants, Amal Farouk, a.k.a. the Shadow King. And I'm really struggling with this character. Um, I, I just really don't know kind of how he's going to work. Yes, he can dish out a root. He's got the nightmare visions where if character advance, ends in advance within three of him, he gets to do his stuff, but then he doesn't have the stealth or something pseudo stealth to then back that up. Um, but he's advancing the enemy character. Like, I I just don't know what it is. He's a, he's a five threat, so he's competing against the likes of Juggernaut and really Mystique, uh, sorry, um, uh, Scarlet Witch, in this roster and I'm not over enamored with him at all maybe he sees more play in timelines because there's um going to be less of what he can do and we obviously do lose Scarlet Witch in timeline events but we're not talking about timelines here um so I yeah I just I just really I'm, I'm not a massive fan of this character um again you know, he's a he's a short move as well, and yes, we can use um, Asteroid M to get him up there. But I think under a Magneto list, if you want that Mystic Attacker, you've already got Scarlet Witch, who does so many other stuff. Now, it may be that Shadow King brings some cards that we have not yet seen, uh, which make him significantly better. But for now, I'm I'm going to put him in there. He doesn't quite go below Remy for me but he is going to be in that C tier and I am you know I am happy to be proven wrong with this one and again I think there might be a lot more value for him in timelines but right now I just don't see how he fits and displaces one of those other five threats um, in a Brotherhood of Mutants roster. Okay then guys next up and our penultimate character is going to be Fred Dukes aka the Blob. Um, he's a 4-2-2 so he's very susceptible to uh, energy and mystic attacks uh, but he can't be pushed he can't be thrown as a result of attack special rules which can be really really nice indeed um, if he suffers damage uh, he can use the superpower to reduce it by one to a minimum of one 
And then if it's within three, he may push them away short, um, which again can be can be quite nice. Uh, he's got the interactive um, terrain feature throw for three power. So it's a size three. So again, you're spending the three, but then you're generating that three back to distribute among himself and his compadriots. Um, Thunderous Splash can be great as a displacement tool. Um, and then his strike is, you know, pretty standard, but he's got a, you know, He's got a push on the on the back end of it on a wild if it's uh, size three or less. I think he's absolutely solid. Um, uh, sorry, I think he's like you know absolutely solid character, not just in stature. Um, I think he can do an absolute job. Wouldn't be surprised to see him in any Brotherhood of Mutants roster. But for me, um, as a three threat, he again he has some some stiff competition. I think it's probably somewhere but you know either side of Quicksilver, sort of take your pick. I think I'd probably put him this side of Quicksilver. He maybe goes up if you're taking him with Toad and you've got Leapfrog and you get to do the whole team up thing. Um, but again, I think it's situational. You could put this guy either side of, of Quicksilver, Quicksilver depending on um, what it is and what matchup it is. You know, that Thunderous Splash on a Gamma Wave, for example, can be absolutely brutal. Um, because everyone within two just get pushed and they take a damage. Plus, they're probably going to get a damage from the uh, the Gamma Wave as well. So, uh, yeah, absolutely solid character. Um, but I think he he's just outshone a little bit by a couple of the other three threats that are in this roster. And then rounding out this list is the Extract Extraordinaire himself, Mortimer Toynbee, a.k.a. the Toad. He's the only in-affiliation two-threat character. But guys, how many times do you see Toad out of affiliation? He is a very, very good two-threat character. His tongue, la tongue Lash has a size two push on there. He's got Finder's Keeper, so he can move an asset or a civilian token to him. Um, he's got his Hop which is really, really good. Um, and guys, one of the reasons that he is very, very good is that uh, prehensile tongue. This character may interact with objective tokens within range two instead of the normal range one. And again, if you can get that power onto him early, he is able to move up, potentially do a hop, get within range, um, get within range two, sorry, and pick up an objective and then move back. Um, he, I think, is the best, um, for, for his threat level, the best um, extract play in the game. Um, Spit Acid is also not to be to be sniffed at either, um, but he's very, very good. And that wall crawl, it might seem insignificant, but the fact that he gets to uh, use that full move always, that full medium move, is very, very nice. And he's got Slippery as well, so once he's being attacked, he can get the hell out of dodge. Um, so it's probably no surprise, guys, that Toy Toad is going up all the way to the top of the list. Um, he's absolutely solid. You see him everywhere, both in and indeed outside of affiliation. And there we go. That is my breakdown of all of the characters um, in Brotherhood of Mutants. Again, remembering under Magneto's leadership. Guys, I want to thank everyone for their support. And in particular, I want to thank everyone who is supporting us over on Patreon. If you want to be part of our Patreon crew, you can do so from as little as a pound a month. There'll be a link down in the description below. But you don't need to be part of Patreon to support us. Um, just simply interacting with this video. Let me know, um, you know, who did I get wrong? Who did I get right? Should anybody be in D tier? Should Scarlet Witch be in S tier? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below and i got a little bit of hate of my placing of uh, brotherhood of mutants in the timelines um and that may have been wrong but you know time will tell uh if you could you know make sure you've subscribed make sure you've liked the video and as i say leave a comment letting me know what you think of the list down below also check out our discord it's where you can find all of our events and things that we're doing we have just announced that we are going to be doing a timeline event so if you're interested in taking part in a timeline event head on over to the discord and you can see the details there and as always guys it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well keep safe and until next time bye for now